One of the biggest surprises of free agency came late in the offseason when the Cleveland Cavaliers traded for guard Donovan Mitchell. After months of trade speculation, Mitchell is finally off to Cleveland to pair with Darius Garland to form a star backcourt. One of the biggest takeaways with this trade is the upgrade in that Cavs backcourt. The Cavs already secured a front court in all-star Jared Allen and rising star Evan Mobley who had a great rookie season. Two defensive monsters who were vital in anchoring the team's improved defense last season. Darius Garland ascended into a star level talent with Colin Sexton missing most of the season. They needed another guy in the lineup to take pressure off of Garland. There was Ricky Rubio who did relieve the playmaking duties before he was traded and then there is Karis LeVert who now sees himself in a six man role which may be best suited for him. The Cavaliers need an offensive boost as they were an average offensive team last season with an offensive rating that ranked 20th in the league. They shot the three ball at 35%, shot in the mid range at 40% and shot at the rim at 66% as a team per clean in the glass. There was definitely room to improve for the Cavs on offense, lacking three point shooters in their lineups. This allowed the defense to trap and force kickouts to average shooters at times. With the Cavs' big lineup, they sacrificed some spacing and shooting for defense, but they were able to utilize their bigs as active cutters, putting them in empty ball screen scenarios, operating Mobley and Allen on the elbows in the posts above the break, and they were good at finding cutters. Laurie Markkinen, Evan Mobley, and Allen had good chemistry involving each other in high-low actions. Laurie Markkinen had a great season with this Cavs team, operating as a spot-up shooter and cutter, as well as giving activity on a defensive end. The Cavs bigs were vital in the offensive development when Garland needed a break. One of the biggest wishes going into next season is Mobley attempting more three-pointers and bumping his efficiency. Mitchell alone doesn't improve the Cavs' lack of three-point shooting, but at least gives another option. One of those bigs are going to have to develop into an outside threat to open up more of the offense. Donovan Mitchell immediately gives the Cavs a big offensive boost as a bucket getter. Someone who could relieve some pressure from Garland who was tasked to be a high usage creator for the Cavs. Garland faced a lot of traps and it was clear they needed a reliable secondary score. Garland and Mitchell are both high level scorers who possesses the skills to play off of each other. The shooting respectively from the two is what's going to make this fit seamless. Mitchell is a career 36% three point shooter and 35% last season. And Garland shot 38% from three last season. Garland is a guy who is a tough shot maker, can make shots off the dribble, off the catch. He's good at getting to his spots in the mid range and can make tough shots over anyone. He was the Cavs' best driver last season, and adding Donovan Mitchell gives the Cavs another guy who can get inside consistently. Garland is also a threat to bring the ball up and launch shots from deep, which he can make. Always keeping the defense on their heels when guarding him, if you go under his screens, he gets into his shot quick. Garland also had his fair share of time being off ball as he shared minutes with Ricky Rubio. The Cavs would run him off some actions to get him catch and shoot shots and he has shown the capability in playing off of guards, being able to execute plays drawn up for him moving off ball. Donovan Mitchell played in a Utah Jazz offense that relied a lot on high ball screens, driving and kicking three other shooters spaced out and a lob threat on the inside. Mitchell's ability to break down defenders, get into the teeth of the defense, and make a kick out and swing passes has grown to be his strength. But he's going to have to adjust to an offense where there's probably going to be two other shooters spaced out and the spacing may not be favorable for him early on. Kevin Love is going to be a key substitute for when one of those bigs gets swapped out, can open up more of the floor of Love at the four. Mitchell's rim threat has grown to where he draws multiple defenders to him and he can make those timely kickout passes and if Garland is open, his ability to shoot will give him more catch and shoot opportunities. Mitchell has attempted more threes over the years, jumping to around 9 a game and a majority of these are off the dribble, off high ball screens. If defenders do not step up or get around to contest, he is a threat to pull up and make a shot. 
Also, just like Garland is a pull-up threat in the mid-range, Mitchell as a passer was good in his drive and kick role, finding guys like Bojan, Conley, and other shooters as this was what the Utah Jazz prioritized in their offense, which made them one of the high frequency three-point shooting teams in the league. Mitchell created a lot of those opportunities. Playing with Rudy Gobert for some years made him a very strong lob passer as well, and this will translate with playing with Allen and Mobley. Now it's no secret that Mitchell didn't look to pass to Gobert off of screens often, but this was done by design using the screen and gravity Gobert provided to hopefully pull in help defenders to create more three-point looks. The Jazz cherished the three-pointer and this is what they look for in their offense. With the Cavs, the big men are important, Mobley and Allen, so offensively this will be changed up where Mitchell is going to have to be a willing passer to them. Mitchell is an underrated passer, I've said this for years, he's gotten a lot better over the years, he can make some really absurd and timely passes, he really does specialize in kick out passes, and he can make some really tough jump passes. Mitchell does possess that explosive burst that makes it tough to stay in front of him and has an array of athletic finishes that Garland kind of lacks. Mitchell is strong, can dunk and finish layups through traffic, spin and get into some crafty finishes, utilizes euro steps on the break or when approaching the paint. Mitchell improved to be an efficient finisher at the rim shooting 65% at the rim according to cleaning the glass. Garland is more of a shifty and crafty ball handler who utilizes ball screens to make plays. Garland operating the pick and roll at a 41% frequency and ranked in the 68th percentile. He's good at putting defenders in jail, snaking screens, getting around the free throw line area, and just causing havoc. Garland has become one of the best passers in the league and has developed a great connection with his bigs. Allen was a big beneficiary from Garland's crafty play in the pick and roll as he got some easy dump offs and lob feeds. Garland is more of a mid-range threat utilizing floaters and coming off screens for jumpers more than a rim threat. According to Cleaning the Glass, 40% of Garland's shots are in the mid-range where he shot 48% ranking in the 92nd percentile for point guards. Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland are great at space creation using step backs and crossovers to open themselves up for shots. These two can simply make plays, break down the defense when they have to. Also, both are pull-up threats which puts even more pressure on the defense to stay attached on ball screens. Just having another reliable scorer and ball handler goes a long way when competing in the league. Donovan is a three-level scorer who can take over games when needed, can score in transition, off ball screens, in isolation, and he gives you a more polished scoring game with playoff experience to pair next to a young and growing Cavs team. Defense is going to be interesting for Mitchell and Garland as they both are smaller guards in the backcourt. Mitchell over the years has struggled to be a focused and reliable point of attack defender. He has a lot of possessions where he struggles to stay in front and doesn't give much resistance. When beat, he dies a lot on plays and he can also be caught ball watching at times off ball, making himself vulnerable to cuts. But when he is really locked in, he has shown he can hold his own on ball and make some good rotations. For years, Mitchell has been the key guy to make plays on offense, so hopefully sharing the ball of Garland will give him a seat back and be more of an improved defender. JB Bickerstaff has done a phenomenal job getting this team to buy in defensively, and we've seen a lot of defensive activity from the likes of Laurie Markkinen and Kevin Love. With what Garland and Mitchell lacks in size defensively, Isaac Okoro, Mobley, and Allen makes up defensively, as they were great cleaning up defensive mistakes, just protecting the rim at a high level, it's more than likely the Cavs will have Garland and Mitchell be help off-ball defenders playing in gaps, making Okoro the main point of attack defender on the opposing team star players. Now I'll wrap it up for this video, what are your thoughts on the Mitchell trade and does this make the Cavs a top 5 team in the East? If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. And with all that being said, I will see you all in the next video.